right, so the major spectator sports in America right now are basketball, football, baseball, and hockey. But I'm going to tell you about a major spectator sport you've never heard of in America, and it's called pedestrianism. All right? So all pedestrianism was was multi-day walking matches. Now, every sport has its origin, and pedestrianism started with a bet between two friends on the 1861 presidential election. So go back to a time when toilet paper was only available for four years, and, and you know the presidential race was between a highly qualified candidate and a notorious bigot, totally indistinguishable from today. All right, so the guy who lost the bet was Edward Payson Weston, and he had to walk 453 miles from Boston to DC for Lincoln's inauguration, and he had to do it in 10 days in the winter. And so he does. And, and that walk, along with many other cross-country walks, made him a household name in America, truly did. And then he got the bright idea to take his act indoors. So he rented out roller skating rinks, which were in vogue at the time, and weren't just used for like middle school birthday parties. And, and he would walk in these rinks. And the thing is, he was really, really a businessman, and he realized the importance of sport as spectacle. And so he would charge admission and do little you know, ways of entertaining the crowd, like walking backwards for a while or playing his cornet. He hired a band, all these things. Now, he was also a very religious man, and he refused to walk on Sundays, which meant the longest time he could possibly walk for was six days straight. And he went 500 miles in six days and just ignited this craze about the six-day race. And sure enough, a competitor emerges. And in 1865, Dan O'Leary beats Edward Payson Weston in his own game in uh, Chicago at what is now the Art Institute of Chicago in front of 6,000 spectators, I mean, who are like desperate for affordable entertainment. So Weston then goes across the pond to England to spark pedestrianism there because he knows he can beat anybody at all there because it's brand new there. And, and in doing that, in the first eight months, he makes the equivalent of $600,000 today and meets Sir John Astley, who's a member of parliament and so enthralled with six-day racing or six-day walking that he starts the Astley Belt Race Series. And this was huge. And, and what he did to encourage competition was change the rules from walking to go as you please. So pedestrians could do whatever they wanted. They could run, walk, crawl, whatever, just to get around the track. Now, the Astley Belt races were really the golden age of pedestrianism and the greatest race series of all time, all right? And, and I mean, it was like national pride was at stake here. It was international competition. It was more talked about than the weather. It was a really big deal. Seriously, right? So here's a, an image of the, the fifth Astley Belt race in Madison Square Garden in 1879, which started at 1 AM in front of 9,000 spectators. Just insane. The conditions were terrible. The place would fill up with tobacco smoke. Competitors would be puking all over the track. But it just added to the spectacle of it. <laughs> Pedestrians were the first celebrity athletes in America. They had trading cards. I own that upper left trading card. That's Jimmy Albert. He's the owner of the six-day record in America today. All right? There was a ton of money involved in gambling. You could bet on anything. You could bet on who would drop out of the race first. Just like the Super Bowl, you can bet on stupid shit like the coin toss. And sometimes the pedestrians would be attacked by, you know, people who had put their life savings on the line. And we also had just, it was just brutality. This one guy, Patrick Fitzgerald, a doctor shoved a scarificator into his thighs to relieve the pressure, and he went on to make a world record, though he never raced again. <laughs> Women did this shit too. This is Madame Ada Anderson. She walked 2,500 quarter miles in 2,500 consecutive quarter hours, which means she didn't sleep for more than 10 minutes at a time for 26 days straight. It's crazy. And then pedestrianism, pedestrianism died with the invention of the standard bicycle because it was way more fun to watch people go speeding around on a track at high speed and crash and really hurt themselves. Now, we don't have any sports like that today because we all agree that NASCAR is not a sport. Now, the six-day race was brought back and is experiencing a very minor revival. And, and an important six-day race even happened in Boulder and was covered every single day extensively by the Daily Camera in, 18, in 1985 and made the front page, twi front page twice. So what I want you to come away with here is that pedestrians were nothing but pedestrian and really paved the way for modern spectator sports in America, even though it's something you've never heard about until tonight.